Welcome to Obsidian Dawn Tutorials. I'm Stephanie from ObsidianDawn.com and this tutorial is going to walk you through how to best use my new iris brushes for creating the irises in eyes. The brushes may be somewhat self-explanatory on their own, but this tutorial should help you make the most of them uh, and use them how I made them to be used. Now keep in mind these brushes will work in both Photoshop and GIMP, but this tutorial is made in Photoshop. Mind you, you could still achieve the exact same effects in GIMP as long as you know how to create new layers and play around with layer styles, you could still absolutely follow along. Now the first step, obviously, is to install the brushes. There should be a link on your screen and in the video's description. And I do have a tutorial on my website, it's a non-video tutorial for now, that explains how to install brushes in both Photoshop and GIMP if you're not sure how. So once you have your brushes installed in the correct folder, you want to click on your brush tool. Uh, you can right click to make sure that the brush tool is selected. And then the small arrow to the right side of your brush tool tip up on top. And then the gear icon on the upper right hand corner of that box that pops up. And right in here should be all of the brush sets that you have in that presets brushes folder. Uh, we're going to click on iris parts to use that one. And yes, we do want to replace the current brushes with the brushes from Iris Parts. Now right now I have uh, stroke thumbnails showing, uh, and you really don't need that for this. Um, as a digital artist, that just tends to be what I use. But we want to use um, not large list, but large thumbnail. And then you can just mouse over the uh, brushes and see exactly what they look like when you just click once with them, which is basically how this brush set was made to be used. Um, also, to be noted here is that they are in kind of the order in which you're going to want to layer them. So the basic shape layer goes on the bottom and then you've got some different kind of rings and then the striations and then the pupil and then on top of that very uh, top layer is the, uh, the uh, reflection. But we'll get to that. So as you can see by mousing over them we've got all kinds of different things from inner rings, middle rings, to uh, outer rings. They are all kind of that bursty iris shape that you're all familiar with, with eyes. And then you've got also some imperfections and striations. I don't know if that's the correct word for what these are called, but that's what I used. Uh, and that's basically going to add the real character to the eye when you get to those. You'll see what I mean when we get there. Uh, two different pupils, large and small, and then some reflections um, from the various types of light sources that you could have on an eye. Um, so let's go ahead and get started and make a new file 2500 by 2500 so it's nice and big so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna go ahead and select the basic shape brush which is just the best basic round shape of the uh, iris. And we're gonna do a blue eye. Um, you want it to be not too saturated, not too light, not too dark, uh, somewhere in the, in the middle towards the saturated end. Just keep in mind that this is just your base um, layer uh, as far as color. You're going to be adding different colors as it, when it comes to different rings as we go. So create a new layer by clicking on create a new layer in your layers palette. And in the file go ahead and click a couple times to make sure that it's nice and solid. It does take a couple of clicks. And I'm not going to name this layer yet because I want to make sure that it's centered. Um, you want to, in order to get everything lined up correctly, you really want your the whole thing centered. So I'm going to select by uh, select all by Control A or Command A, Control C, Control V to paste, and that's just going to put um, exactly what you just made on a new layer, but it's going to be completely centered. And there may be a better way to do that, but I think that that's the fastest way. So I'm going to right click on this low, uh, lower layer and delete it because we don't need it anymore. Now we've got this centered base shape layer. You can also delete using that button down there. So then I'm going to double click on the text and name this base color. And then we're going to, next thing we're going to do is the pupil uh, because it makes it easier to kind of line up everything else. So I'm going to use a black-ish color, not pure black because nothing in nature is pure black. And uh, on a new layer, go ahead and use one of the pupil brushes, uh, either pupil small or large. 
Uh, I'm not really sure why I made two of those, but um, you can obviously resize it. But they are two different shapes. So then uh, it doesn't have to be centered. You can go ahead and click a few times to make sure that you get your pupil on there nice and solidly. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, make sure that the pupil is centered as well though, so that everything else can be uh, lined up properly by doing again Command or Control A, Command or Control C, and then V to copy and paste. And then go ahead and delete this lower uh, layer. As you can see it's centered now. And then I'm going to double click on this to name the layer just so we can keep track of everything. I'm going to name this Pupil. And then everything else that you're going to do is going to go between the base layer and the pupil layer. So you're going to click on the base layer and then create a new layer. And one of the main mistakes that you can make when doing this is to use different colors within this same palette of blue. Um, different eyes have different colors in them. You're going to want to go a little bit more towards the green side, a little bit more towards the violet side, maybe even add some actual green in there or some things that make uh, blue eyes really pop is by adding some browns. So maybe what we'll do with this one is add some browns near the center to just really make that color pop. So um, each ring that you do, you can do in a different color. I'm going to do the inner center browns. I'm going to use one of these inner rings and do like a starburst of brown towards the center here. I click a few times and that's pretty rudimentary, but you can get the idea for what's going to start happening here. Uh, then I use a different one and again, a new layer to kind of line it up. You see why we put the pupil there. You can really line up what we're doing a lot better here. And um, I can you change the size a little bit if you want to make sure that it really rings that pupil because I, I want the, the browns to be like coming right out of the pupil on this one. So that's about perfect. And then click a few times with that. And as you can see, I'm adding some browns to the center. Uh, you can see what each layer does there. And you can play with the opacity of each one as well as the layer styles in your layer palette. You can do something like overlay or color or um, normal. There's all kinds of different ones that you can use. Now I'm going to call this browns1 and browns2 just so I can keep track of those. And then make a new layer and we'll get back to some blues. This is um, a little bit more saturated, saturated and light blue, as well as being a little bit more towards the green end of the spectrum. And we'll do a different, uh, maybe a middle ring this time. And you can kind of barely see where that is, but um, click a few times to get that showing up. And now you can see it's really starting to barely look like an iris. And you can always, uh, if you don't get it exactly centered, you can always click on a move tool up there and move it around using your mouse or using the keys on your keyboard to move it pixel by pixel. And that will uh, help you to get it centered. Now I'm going to name this one middle one. And let's try another middle ring of a slightly different color, maybe even more towards the greens. And that one adds uh, some distinctiveness. And what I'm going to do with this one is, uh, let's get it centered first. And then I'm going to do an overlay. And you see how pretty that looks. It really is starting to make the eye pop and just look very distinctive. So I'm going to name this one middle two. And then we'll do yet another layer. And I don't really like the way that that brown towards the center is looking right now. I want to add a little bit of blues to it so that it's the, it's like the brown is shining through the blue kind of. So I'm going to put that blue layer on top and then maybe change the opacity a little bit. That's better. Now you can see how there's a little bit of blue kind of burst effect coming from the center, but there's also some of the brown. And I'm going to name this uh, middle blue. And then yet another layer, as you can see kind of the trend here. 
And I'm gonna add an outer ring to this. A lot of eyes have a darker outer ring. Um, not all do, but it tends to make eyes look very distinctive if you do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it with this one. And uh, as you can see, that uh, you can, it came out kind of dark. Now you, so you can change the opacity uh, to be a little bit lower. Or one of the tricks you can do is choose the eraser tool and then go in and use this dark inner dark circle brush uh, which is just kind of random roundness and make sure that you use a low opacity brush and then just go in and there's your opacity slider right there and then just go in and delete or, or erase some of the edges to kind of gradiate it more so that it's even more of a gradation towards that outer ring you now it looks fine how it is too but uh, I, I just like doing this. It looks better, <laughs> I think. So now I'm going to call this darker edge and maybe another outer ring that's a little bit more on the light side to try to make it blend even more. And you see this one doesn't quite go to the edges like the last one did. So then, uh, oops, not an eraser. Let's use a regular brush. and just click once and see it makes it even more gradiated but I'm gonna change this let's see maybe overlay uh, lighten multiply uh, any of these uh, really can do all kinds of different stuff with the different layer styles so really play around with those I definitely suggest that but I think I am going to stick with overlay on this one. I just like the way it looks. I notice where I place that layer. The um, whether it's on top of or below a certain thing is really going to change how it looks. Um, I put that one underneath the darker edge so that it could kind of slowly gradiate out to it rather than overlaying it. Now what I'm going to do here is show you kind of how to use this inner dark circle brush, which I'm not sure why I named it dark, but a lot of eyes have an inner dark circle towards the pupil. And that again can kind of make it pop. So um, it's just kind of a random roundness with some fuzzy edges kind of a brush. And I don't really like how this is looking. I think I used too dark of a color or maybe too large of a brush. Um, let's see here. I'm actually just gonna make that layer invisible and maybe keep it but and use a dark blue instead of the black pupil color and just barely larger than the pupil and that looks a lot better maybe even slightly smaller and yeah, that's better. A little bit darker, a little bit, uh, I'm gonna change the opacity on that to look exactly how I want it to. And now create another layer. And this is when I'm gonna start adding some of the um, imperfections and striations. And that really starts to give the eye some character. So let's start with some striations. And I'm going to do this in a kind of a medium blue color again, maybe towards the lighter side. And I want this layer to be on the top of everything else except for the pupil. That's the darker center. And I'm just going to delete this because I didn't like how that one looked. So go back to this one. We're going to name it striations and center it based on where the pupil is and click once or twice. Uh, as you can see, that didn't really do a whole lot to the color. I didn't pick a light enough color, but you can always fix that by going under Image and Adjustments, and then you can really do it under Brightness, Contrast, or Hue and Saturation, but let's do uh, Hue and Saturation, and then up the lightness a little bit so that it is more dramatic. And you can change the saturation here too, which just makes it more or less blue. 
And you can also change the hue here too if you wanted to do it more towards the green end or just change the color. I'm gonna actually do it a little bit more towards the teal end and not quite as much lightness. And then I'm gonna play with the layer style again and do overlay and oh, that looks so pretty. Uh, you can add a second striations layer, just to add more uh, differentiation to each iris so that they don't all look exactly the same. And I'm going to do a lighter color again and change this layer style again to maybe overlay again. And yeah, I really like how that looks, but um, now say I've decided that I've really kind of washed out that brown inner ring that I created back in the beginning. You can't really see much brown left. So I'm going to take a brown color and one of those inner rings that kind of bursts out from the pupil itself. And uh, go ahead and rename this one to Striations 2 and then create a layer on top of that, on top of everything except for the pupil and then click once and then I'm going to go in here to the layer styles and choose color and it's just going to change the color so you still get all those different lights and darks but it changes it to brown and now I'm going to tie that in to the whole brown scheme by using the imperfections brush I need to name this first and you can actually see go back at this point and start playing with the uh, opacities and the blending and uh, just turning on and off layers to see how it looks like I'm doing here. Um, I actually like how it looks as it is, so I'm going to leave it. But create a new layer and then make sure that you've got browns, the imperfections brush. I'm going to name this imperfections and you can't really see this brush because it's really light. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of move it towards the center-ish and click a few times. Okay, that actually ended up not too bad. You could always use the move tool to move it afterwards though, if it wasn't quite right. And uh, let's see how this looks with overlay. No, you can't really see it as much. Color, it's a little better, but you know, I really like the way that this looked on the, the normal blending mode. So I'm gonna go back to that. And now this is really starting to look like an eye. Um, the only thing that's missing really is the uh, light source in the room, which creates a reflection. And that should be on top of the pupil layer. So make sure that you click on the pupil layer first, then go down to create a new layer and create a new layer on top of that. Then you're gonna wanna name this reflection or just ref one. Since I'm gonna do a couple of them, I'll just shorten it. I'm going to speed through this part and just show you the different reflections that I have. Uh, two of them, you'll notice, have actual shadows from eyelashes, and that's a pretty common occurrence, actually, when you have a really high light source in the room. Um, also keep in mind that, as you're seeing right here, you can extend it out beyond the iris itself or into the eye white, assuming that you have an eye white and that your iris isn't just floating in space like mine is. So here's a couple different just various shapes and you can see there you can combine them as well if you want different shapes or erase part of them. This one looks kind of like a window actually across the room and adds some, some depth to the eye, some curvature. You can also move it around using the move tool to get it exactly where you want it. Now I'm going to show you here uh, a trick to get some oomph out of the eye and really add some contrast to it. So what I'm going to do is I hit the background layer there by clicking on the eye on the left hand side of it and uh, you're going to hide any layers that are not a part of your iris. And then command or control A to select all and making sure that you have any layer that is visible selected. Do shift command or control C. And that's going to copy all visible layers and then command or control V to paste. And you see, I now have this eye, the whole eye all on one layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into brightness and contrast. No, first I am going to desaturate it completely, which looks pretty horrible, but that's okay. We're going to fix it. And then I'm going to go into uh, brightness and contrast and up the contrast on it. 100% just so that it's 
lots of contrast. You can always adjust the layer opacity later. Uh, then switch the layer style to luminosity. And now as you see, you get all of that contrast without, well, the reason that I did that is if you were to just add contrast to that layer without desaturating it first and just doing it on that layer, it would have become extremely blue, very saturated. So that's the trick to um, adding some contrast without upping the blue value or the saturation. And I'm just going to call this contrast layer and then I'm going to hide it because I want to show you some tricks. Um, so back when you're adding the different striations and the different layers, um, one of the tricks you can use is to hit Command or Control T to rotate it and make sure that it doesn't look the same, exactly the same, isn't the same angle every single time that you use it, so that irises look very different. In fact, that's one of the reasons that you have so many different layers and so many different striations and such to use, is because no two irises look the same. Kind of like snowflakes. Another thing you can do is, as you're applying the brush, change the orientation of the thing. So, for example, I'll choose this striations brush, and you can do it right here in Photoshop CC. That changes the angle or, or orientation of the brush as you use it. Uh, if you have an older version of Photoshop, you can find it right here under brush tip shape in your brush palette. Uh, just the exact same thing right there. Now, there's one last thing that I have to mention. As an artist, I need to tell you that this eyeball is kind of flat right now. Um, you need to keep in mind what direction the light source is coming from and add some highlights and uh, shadows based on that. So there's your light source right now based on where you put your reflection. It's coming from that direction. So there's going to be an eyelid shadow up near the top of the eye, the iris, and there's going to be um, the way the eye is going to or the light is going to refract as it goes through the curvature of the eyeball and it's going to be a little bit light up near where the reflection is and then a lot light down near the bottom and i'll show you what i mean just by adding some really rudimentary shadows and uh and lights so up here is going to be kind of where the shadow is and down here is going to be where the light is going to be refracted out the curvature of the eye, kind of in a curve like that. And um, uh, there might be a little bit right up here, like I said, right by where the, the reflection was added, but most of it's right down there. In fact, I can just go ahead and blur this layer a little bit, and you will see what I mean as far as adding some depth to the eye. I'm just going to blur it and change the layer style, I'll erase that arrow, change the layer style to overlay, and there you go. You've got some more depth to your eye already. You can change the, uh, the opacity. I wouldn't suggest, by the way, doing those both on the same layer. You want to be able to control the light and the shadow separately. So, But that's basically it. Um, your eyeball is now rounded and beautiful and full of various striations and colors just like it should be. Um, hopefully this has helped you. I know it was a little bit of, long, of a long tutorial compared to what I usually do, but I really wanted to show you the details of uh, the different ways that you could do this. So if you liked it, throw me a like. If you want to follow me, please do. And uh, I also have uh, newsletters and all kinds of stuff, places that you can follow me on my website at obsidiandawn.com. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.